how do you, you know, there are moments that arise. First, there are moments that arise face to face, just the opportunity. And I'll, I'll go back to going up in the elevator with uh, the president or, or with the chair of the faculty senate or the this or the that. That in person mm -hmm. allow you to strike and to take advantage. And I, I, you know, I see that's where your question is coming from. Exactly. Yeah. And so there are those moments. Now on the other hand, <coughs> Um, much can be done if you can make, you know, if you can be there once a week or if you can be there in some way um, in person uh, fairly often, then, then I think you can, make, you can make those opportunities occur. Um, you know, I, 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 the last thing I would say is we're all here, right? And so that strikes for being together physically. Um, people come to conferences. We still do, you know, phone conference calls and we still do videos. And, you know, I know Heather is enormously talented and, and she has these opportunities and, you know, they're, they're ready to do this at a distance, or they may be ready to do this at a distance. Yeah. So you want to kind of, that's right. So you want to kind of, you know, and you, you know, I think along with that, let me, let me just say, for example, Mary Neiman, a uh, good friend, many of us know Mary, and uh, Mary's uh, uh, associate vice president for the University of, you know, so we know Mary, yeah, you know, associate vice president <laughs> for the University of Nebraska, what is it called, World Campus? Uh, global, global, global Campus, global. okay. Yeah, uh, and so um, she, you know, came from Chicago and continues to live in Chicago and, and ends up in Lincoln, Nebraska, or Kearney, or, or Omaha, or any of the campuses, right? And uh, she's able to make that work. Um, we have, an, you know, there are other instances where administrators are able to make this work a couple or three days a week. But, but if you're not there for a month, it's hard for me to conceive, you know, or I should say, you're going to miss opportunities. Okay. I, I I do think, though, that um, there are very few positions at a university where position power has, is the ultimate power. And so, I, I, your question of geography, I don't think you need to be necessarily sitting in the president's office and sitting on the president's council and sitting on the council of deans. You don't necessarily have to be present at the top echelon in order to be successful. You have to have an advocate there, but you don't necessarily have to. to Say that again, Say that again out loud. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be sitting at the top in the President's Council having the position power to be effective. You need to have an advocate at that level, but you don't have to be there. What's important is that you develop relationships with people. Uh, do you have a restaurant on your campus? Mm -hmm. And take people to lunch. Mm -hmm. Honestly, <laughs> it's a good use of your budget to take senior faculty, friendly deans, the budget officer, uh, student affairs people, take them to lunch once in a while and ask them questions. Talk about your dreams and goals for the operation and where you're running into problems and try to make them advocates in their own worlds for what you want to do. And you do that by establishing informal relationships. Mm -hmm. Informal relationships are the heart of management in higher education, mm -hmm. much more than position power itself. So, so I would carefully think through, I might add, um, the first couple of weeks or months if you do this. So right now, you know, my institution is running and I'm not there. So we're all teleworking, right? In addition to being here, we're all teleworking. You're all, I see everybody on their iPhones and their laptops. And so in my institution, I'm sure many of you are spread out, so our headquarters is in one location, and the heart and soul of the academic world is 17 miles away mm -hmm. in a whole different building. And so I'm always on the Beltway, you know, looping around to the two buildings. And so, look, if it's three hours or 17 miles, you still have that same, how can I have that presence in certain places so that they, you know, kind of, because it isn't really about being powerful. It's about, I think, working with your team so that they understand what your expectations are. So build a vision with them, mm -hmm. set expectations, put together a code of how you're all going to work together. 
spend some time at first. I heard you say that you might be able to spend like even a couple months there, maybe or a couple of weeks anyway, face weeks. to face. Yeah. Yes. Spend a lot of time, and then and then over time, you don't have to be there every day, mm -hmm. and you can go down to two days a week. But I think if you set everything at the front, it could work. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to make a reflection, if I might, on that. and this goes back to our, our dear friend Bruce. One of the things I, I learned from watching Bruce was, and we heard it yesterday at, at, at the program for him, we did talk about, people did talk about what Bruce had achieved, if you will, or the things he enacted, but mostly the conversation was about the relationships that Bruce had established. And, and if there was one thing, well, there's lots of things Bruce was good at, but boy, building and maintaining relationships was, he was a master, which I will use the term a politician. And, and I, I think that idea, what I'm hearing you say is be present, be active, build relationships, build trust. Gary's point, you don't have to fight your way onto every strategic thing. So I'm changing a little bit, Christine, of what, what you and I just talked about. But I, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm hearing you say it's more about being engaged, figuring out, and Gary, I might add, instead of taking all the faculty who are friendly or deans, you might also find the ones who are neutral. Yeah. You might not get the ones who are negative to the table, but work on the neutral ones as well because those relationships are what can flip mm -hmm. till you get them into your camp. So now they're representing you at the higher level. And if I could add one other thing, that this is advice that was given to me by one of our associate deans very early on. She told me, if you're going to be successful at doing this, you're going to have to develop a reputation for being a scholar of what you do. You're going to have to know and be able to communicate essential information about our field because no one else has it. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has, you know, what they heard on, on the internet. But, <laughs> but so you need to be a, trust, a trustworthy source of believable information about our field and be willing to share that information on occasion. So when you come to places like this, when you go home, write some memos, write some reports, say here's what we heard, here's, here's an institution that's doing something really innovative that we might be interested in, and become a source of that information. Even better, co-author with some of your yeah. faculty. Yeah. Can I tell you a lesson I learned from Gary Miller, and I still do this? He said to me one time, he who takes the notes <laughs> yeah. writes the story, writes the narrative, that's what's good, right? Okay. It's the first version of history is written by the guy who took the notes. That's right. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I use that. When I come out of a meeting, I'll say, you know what, folks, and who else is going to do this, right? right. Yeah, I'll put together some notes and I'll circulate them. So I begin to frame it, and I learned that from Gary, because you did that masterfully, and it set the tone, and it directed the agenda, which I think was masterful. And then you get to put it in your words. Yes, right. Redirect the whole Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that thought occurred to me. <laughs> so we have some of our colleagues, our IELA alum. Are there more folks out there? Or? Come on, come on. So uh, we're running out of chairs. Next year, we're going to ask for a larger room. Where's Kathleen? We're going to go for a larger room. Kathleen's <laughs> <laughs> with us as well. Yeah. So just for you. Mark, I mentioned, I would agree with what you said about sort of taking the notes. And, and don't think of uh, it as only after a meeting, but think of it when you've done a staff retreat or a yeah. departmental meeting <laughs> plan. Sure. Uh, I've always um, volunteered to be the editor of some oh, reports, yeah. and it's been great. Amanda. The other thing that I would say, a great piece of advice, um, several years back, um, uh, an administrator told me, every week you should be able to say or send a thank you to three people. Now, I don't always get my three out, but um, I, I think that's a really important piece for connectiveness, too. So we just had a new faculty um, student affairs database, and there was someone like thrown into the fire. Publicly, I thanked her. I sent her a note, wow. you know, because She's not high on the food chain, she's not anything, but wow, did she make a difference in what we do. Um, and so I think that's something that I try to do as well. And you copy her supervisor, you copy someone else. Actually, I just replied all it. to this one. Yeah. <laughs> so that everyone saw, well, thank you. That's a great strategy. For <laughs> great strategy. And be authentic about it. I mean, don't of just course. thank people for thanking them. <laughs> Good. I'm going to go for one more last question, and then we're going to transition to the last part. Um, <laughs> go. I guess my, my ultimate question is, 
how do you get people maybe on your side of the fence to actually give up the cash for all the initiatives that are being charged on our side of the fence? Because I think a lot of us are being charged to do everything with nothing. And sooner or later, we have to have budget to get something moving, to get over the inertia, to get the training done, to buy the equipment, to do whatever we need to do. So if you're on that side of the table, what does somebody on this side of the table need to say to you to get the cash? Oh, I need an <laughs> ROI statement. I mean, I need a two-page plan that says, if you give me this much money, here's how I will use that to then give the inst get the institution this much revenue. And that's often hard because we are not, we're all academics or we have a master's in instructional technology or something, and so we don't know how to do that. If you have somebody in your business office that you're, you know, friends with or somebody who can help you, it doesn't have to be um, anything that's fancy. Just show me how that's going to happen. I have a registrar who is phenomenal. She, she came sort of trained to do this. But whenever she needs something, um, I love these kinds of emails. Um, Hi, Marie, uh, I have this issue. But here's the solution. Da -da 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 -da. It's going to cost us this much, but we're going to save this much. I'm like, approved. <laughs> <laughs> so really, make it easy for the person to say yes. And I can follow up, you know, the hot button issue are enrollments. We just talked about that briefly. Mm -hmm. So you can say, look, at, you know, by casting a wider net, by launching these classes online, mm -hmm. we're going to bring in 125 more students. And it may not sound like a lot, but then for you do the math for them, multiply it by the total cost of the degree, and now we're talking <coughs> big dollars. Yeah. And but connect training to retention. Right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do this only for, uh, for Bruce. Just one more question. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, what do you do in a situation where a, uh, a program, a project's moving along, doing really well, um, loses its leadership, you're off track, um, and you got to get it back on? And so what data do you need? With whom do you need to share the data? Um, what do you do strategically to get it back? You're talking about like a degree program? I'm talking about a competency-based program okay. that, that we began. So how many others are engaged in that program right now, or is it just one individual leading it? It's just the one program. Okay. This individual was leading it. He is now gone. There were some political issues. Okay, he's yeah, now yeah, gone. Yeah. Since he's gone, he's become on ship. Okay. They don't want to do it anymore. Nice. Well, you know, one of the things that you might want to do is to gather data from the person who left, okay? Get everything you can, and even if it means, you know, following them to us, to wherever they, who knows, they might have gone from Kentucky to Illinois, right? So go up there and, and, and do what Gary said, take them out to lunch or her out to lunch and talk about it and take copious notes so that you've got, you know, you really understand the program, where it's going, and ask that person, you know, you've got this far, how can you take it farther? And do what you can so that you can then identify someone who can carry that momentum forward. Ultimately, it shouldn't be you, probably. Ultimately, it should be someone else. But you need, or you need to assign someone to gather that. You may be in a position where you can and you're, you may not be able to assign it to someone at a lower level. It may require you to go out and, and you know, with an olive branch if need be, you know, to, to try to uh, uh, resolve it. It also doesn't hurt to go back to the original thinking uh, around the program. Why did we do this? What was our goal? And have we been meeting that goal or did we fail? If we fail, close the program. Uh, but if we were meeting the goal, as the institution had bought into, they said, we want to do this. Then the question is, how do we sustain that? Uh, then perhaps the, another step would be to say, who are the stakeholders? Who, who around the institution benefited from the success of that program? Let's bring them together and say, how do we move this forward? And, and it, it becomes a community action, not an individual action. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'm going to ask Chris, last comment. Yeah, I just wanted to say from a, a president's perspective, a lot of times when we have an issue we're trying to get things done, uh, we'll field test this with some of the leadership that we have entrusted in the organization to make sure that we're really not crazy because we come out uh, along with crazy ideas all the time. Um, and then we really entrust them to get it done because if you don't have leaders 
within your organization that can get it done, then you've got problems. You know, they, they won't always succeed, but they need to mostly succeed. Um, because otherwise you're not making progress within an organization. So I'm very careful to appoint people who I think can get things done within an organization and have the influence and the relationships to be able to accomplish that. That's really important. But on the other end, when you see that it's a priority of the president or the provost, and Marie can attest to this, and that it's something that, that the organization needs to get done, if you can volunteer to be part of that project, because we're very aware of the leaders within the organization that are helping them move the agenda forward. And I really uh, identify talent that way in terms of how this moves together. And I think it's very important for you to begin to identify that as well if you want to be part of that team that is moving things forward within the college or the university. Thank you, Chris. So with that, I'm going to draw this part to a close. Before we lose them again, let, did we lose them again? No, I don't know if they've got their mics on. Okay. They, they can definitely hear us. They can hear us? It's a sad group. Hey! hey. 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 It's a uh, 22 to 8 at the moment. 20 to 8. been up for a while. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Elizabeth on or? Elizabeth. Okay, and her time difference was harder. Okay, good. Thank you for being with us and say hi to Elizabeth for us, Andrew. Okay. Wonderful. So let me uh, transition two things. We just have a couple minutes left, 15 minutes left. Before I forget, let me tell you this. Uh, well, let me ask Liz or and or Renee and or Shanta to, to uh, reference this for us. Well, thank you for referencing this. <laughs> What's this look like? This, yeah, you go ahead. That's the location of our celebration tonight. So it's the 20th floor, room 20097, or I should say suite 20097. And you take the central elevator. Central what's tower elevator. What's, what's the password you have to give at the door? So we do hope, and do you want to just tell us a little bit about what we might expect this evening? Um, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, your unofficial entree into the IELOL Alumni Association. Yeah. <laughs> Um, tonight is um, a reception that we have started to do on an annual basis here, thanks to um, the leadership of Sloan C and uh, Larry, the faculty, etc. Uh, of Sloan C. Um, it's not a secret hazing ceremony. No. <laughs> uh, don't tell them everything, Liz. Don't tell them everything. I can't tell you everything about it, but um, really it's just an opportunity for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us for all of the cohorts over the past five years to meet each other and network and talk about our experiences. Um, I'm sure tonight there will be uh, some remembrances of Bruce Shalou. Um, I won't go into that now, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we'll have some refreshments, some food, something to eat, drink. Um, we'll hear from the Sloan Sea staff, uh, some members of the Sloan Sea board as well. So um, we're really looking forward to it. It's an informal type of gathering, and we hope to see you there. Terrific, thank you. And um, we've, we've had some 745. So, um, with those folks who are IELOL alum previous to this year, because uh, you've come in a little bit, just so that people can kind of say, oh, when I see that guy again, I'm going to say hello. Can you tell us who you are, where you're from, and what year? I don't remember what year was it. 2010. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Garvey Pike. Uh, I work at USC Charlotte. And 45 minutes ago, I was named the new director of our Center for Teaching and Learning. Yeah. And you would always say, we'll take credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's funny. And when I was putting together my resume for all this, um, I, it was a, a proud moment for me to put on about IELL and, uh -huh. and describe what it is. And one of the things I said was that it was an ongoing community. And it is. And to have these events where we come back and can, can network and, and work and share together is great. So, terrific. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Okay. Yeah. Oh, again? 
<laughs> I'll do it again. I'm Deborah Derrick from the uh, Quality Matters Program from the 2009. The inaugural uh, year. The inaugural, the charter, and it, it that has a proud place yeah. on my uh, on my uh, resume and my bio, and it's, I uh, and I look forward to to continuing my connections with the group. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Let me go. I don't want to miss anybody here. I'm going to go back here. Oh, oh give her. Hi, my name is Kadria Lewis. I think I'm the only medical educator in this room. <laughs> I work for Cincinnati Children's Hospital uh, Medical Center. I'm a faculty member, but soon I'm transitioning to a new position. I'm moving to Kansas City. I just accepted a job as the Director of Evaluation and Program Development uh, at Children's Nurse Hospital, and this position includes full professorship from the UK. <laughs> Take credit for that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to tell you, really, uh, we're just such a great group, and every year I come to this conference uh, and I feel I belong to this group. And it's a great networking. I mean, I learned um, each of the members and from our mm -hmm. faculty a lot of things. It's just very supportive, and I'm trying to push some other people in the center of the program, Good. and there is one possibility. Good. <laughs> Good. Thank, you. Thank you. Luke? Hi, my name is Luke Dodd, I'm the director of Falling Over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the director of distance learning at University of Louisiana Lafayette. I'm a 2010 er also, so happy for you, Garvey. I was in your class and, and, and Liz as well. Um, and I've gained so much from uh, IELOL. So my project uh, has actually was implemented uh, the summer after I came and is, uh, is, is two years into launch. And so I can answer your question about how you get the money as well. Um, so time is all about that. Um, but I'm so happy to be with all of you. I look forward to connecting with you tonight. I'm so happy to see uh, David yep. and, uh, and some of the people with the, that were in our class. So congratulations on just being a part of the group and on completing. Thanks, Luke. Uh, David Stone, I think you're up next. Right. My name is David Stone. I am Director of Strategic Initiatives and Online Learning at Southern Polytechnic State University, which will be merging with Kennesaw State University next year. Mm -hmm. well, nice. So I'll have a different title next year. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I was part of the 2010 class as well, and so I really enjoyed the, the community. Frank. Uh, hi, I'm Frank Thompson. I'm Director of Online Teaching and Learning at the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was actually uh, started at Northwestern University when I attended Sloan, and this is my second organization that I'm starting about online teaching and learning. And one of the things that I brought to the table, I think, is through the experiences, instead of waiting for somebody to ask me a question, I prepare a framework that delineates for all of my stakeholders the strategy and how to achieve it, which is who's doing what, when, and how much it's going to cost, and the benefit that the institution will drive by leveraging on my teaching money. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Frank. I am Tanta Rachomi, and I'm from the University of Houston here. I, I was with Frank, uh, Lenny, and Deb in 2009, the inaugural group. And uh, thanks to all my faculty. I think we have uh, transitioned into a very robust online um, e-learning environment in USCL and keep growing. keep growing. So hopefully there will be much more to see and say next time. Thanks, Shanta. Renee. Hi, everyone. I'm Renee Chiquino. I'm a senior instructional designer at Seton Hall University. And I was in the local group, of course, with these times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, five, this was five years ago, and we're still, you know, we look forward to seeing each other at conferences, we Facebook, we, we get to know everybody in the IELOL Facebook group. Um, but what this, what this conference or this particular program has done for me was, um, it took me five years, but I was able to get policy for online and hybrid course development in front of the Academic Policy Committee, mm -hmm. which was just brought to them uh, a month ago. Uh, so, yeah, which was a huge deal, because we have no policy. But now we have my policy. <laughs> Um, 
I, I could talk for a very long time about the benefits of IELOL to me personally, to our institution. I'm here with my colleague today, Amy Gamero, who's part of your cohort. <laughs> um, and uh, so, but I think mainly uh, we've just had uh, a tremendous um, experience with so many of the IELOL leaders. Uh, Larry has been out to visit us at LIU. Uh, Ray Schroeder came in virtually for one of our teaching uh, with technology conferences. Meg Banky has been to LIU. Um, most recently, Bruce Shalou came to LIU in March of 2013, and he addressed us there. So, yeah, in the <laughs> Are you going to tell tonight? I do have a Bruce story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So uh, just, just such a range of benefits, uh, as I said to me personally and to our institution. Um, being part of IELOL was a pivotal moment in my, in my career, I can honestly say that. And I'm very proud, like the rest of you, to list that on my resume, um, that I'm a, I'm a completer of this program. So uh, I'm looking forward to tonight and the rest of the conference with the rest of you. Great. Good. Thank you. seven minutes and I promised you or I asked that I'm going to give you some feedback so one of the things I'm going to ask you to do promise me is that you will respond to our evaluation when it comes out in a couple weeks um, give us honest feedback but so we're not going to deal with that now normally we would have taken a little bit of time and gone around the room one of the things that I'm thinking of changing and this is where I need some input um, this year and last year we used the case of fit and um, although I think it worked, worked better this year than it did last year, and I think it had the effect that Bruce and I had hoped it would have and such, I got to thinking about something that we missed and we're, and we're missing in the program. And that is an opportunity to dig in a little bit more and develop some thinking and some uh, nomenclature around some of the issues that we're dealing with. So for example, we talk about this thing called MOOCs, but we, they're sort of a fleeting conversation that's out here and we talk about open education resources and maybe as a reference and, and governance issues over here. And, and we really don't deal with, in, in my opinion, some of, some of the meat and potatoes, if you will, of, of online learning, some of the big issues. So here was my uh, suggestion, and Bruce liked this, that we, we bag the case of fit and we swap it out for topical, so, so your Wednesday night presentation to these guys mm -hmm. is going to be on a single topic of which that table team, and every team will have a different topic, has to dig into and understand. So let's say, for example, this team is assigned MOOCs. You have a day and a half mm -hmm. to get some information together. We'll give you a web space to collect and archive that information. I'm working on this kind of a neat tool to do that. And on Wednesday night, you're going to be meeting still with Dr. Uh, Singh. <laughs> and, but, but you're going to be sharing your information, it, which will enable you to dig into a topic. Table in the back here, you guys are going to deal with something else. If we all collect the resources and the information from each of these groups, yeah. we now leave mm -hmm. with this collective intelligence around, and guess where the topics are going to come from? You know, we don't generate them. They come from the Horizon New Media Report, right? Which is the top 10 issues facing higher ed. Okay, so we get you immersed, and, and then we have the ability at the very end to have. I'm thinking of something like a three-minute. There's a name to these five-minute like Pikachu talk. thing. There's a name. To <laughs> <laughs> Pikachu's the only thing I can remember. Okay. <laughs> What's it called? Pachacha. 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 <laughs> so we do a pachacha, and, and each team gets five minutes to educate the rest of the group. What did you learn about your technology or your phenomenon? What do you think of that as Andrea? Gorgeous. I, <laughs> this is just my opinion, so I don't know if it will be shared, but the topics are humongous and it could be a doctoral dissertation mm -hmm. each of them. So what I liked about the case of FIT was it forced us to think within certain parameters of the size of the university, mm -hmm. the international, et cetera. So I think having the different topics is great. For me, I think that it would still help to have a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. So 
give each top of the university and each group yes. is yeah. presenting to yep. the board of trustees mm -hmm. on exactly. how that university with the parameters what do we do? that you yeah. decide yeah, exactly. for you to find yep. should move ahead. That'll exactly be the scenario. Tom. But it also helps to know more about Dr. Sang individually as the mm. person to know um, biases, things that the uh, Dr. Singh is interested in or not interested in, and maybe the approach to convincing him The challenge him. I have with that, though, is every Dr. Singh will be different <laughs> know, when but, you meet him right. or her. But I mean, but that's, that's probably the biggest hurdle yeah. for any of our pitches is that person sitting in front of us yeah. on the board. Yeah. We have to pitch it to you. Okay. Let me go to Bill and then I want to come up here to Christine. Um, I keep hearing more and more, you know, issues related. It's not necessarily to the technical aspects of, you know, uh, learning development, but more related, you know, to venture creation, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial drive, mm -hmm. change management, mm -hmm. these type of things that you know confront you know most of us that you know, have nothing to do with learning uh, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So likely.